What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, and welcome to the final video in the week-long celebration of my third anniversary of being on YouTube, and this is the debut of my newest series, What Makes This Drum Track Great? It's a video idea that I came up completely independently on my own and not ripped off from anyone. So the drummer we're going to be doing today is one that I have been uh, requested to do a lot in my drum react series and I just never got to them. So I figured I would just do this. Uh, we're going to do Trey Cool, we're going to do Green Day and we're going to be doing Holiday. Man, Trey Cool is a fantastic drummer and I think that he doesn't get his just due. And it may be because he kind of goes by stage name and maybe people don't take him as seriously as they should. But if you go and look at his recorded history, th th there's hundreds of millions of records sold with this guy's drumming on it. And all of the drumming is great, especially on today's track. Now, before we get into it, first, I would like to uh, give this, uh, give a shout out to my bass player, Doug. Uh, this video is for you, sir. He is probably the biggest Green Day connoisseur of my friend's circle. We've been, I've actually talked uh, to him about this video a lot. This video is definitely going to get copyright claimed. So if you would help me and you think I deserve it, please give me a like, comment, and a share. Check out my Patreon. Check out my merch table. And then, of course, if this video gets copyright claimed, I will just go on a live stream and bitch about it annoyingly for 20 minutes. I love you, Rick Beato, but come on, man. Let's see what we got here. Okay, there you go, intro. That intro sets up, I don't need this drum key here. Uh, this uh, intro sets up a signature drum part. If you watch my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of signature drum parts. What does that mean? A signature drum part is something that you can play on the drums without the music going on and you know exactly the song we're talking about. This is a signature drum part. That's a signature drum part. You play that anywhere in the world, people know exactly what you're talking about. So this part, uh, he's on the floor tom, and he's playing the uh, like the jazz pattern, right? Uh, four on the floor on the bass drum. If you want the the listener to get sucked into uh, what you're playing, nothing brings the the boys and girls to the yard than four on the floor. So he's playing. first part. Now that part is going to come back later in the bridge and it's such a good part that you could tell that Trey Cole is like, man, I've come up with this great part. I need to use it again and it will become uh, the main section of the drum part in the uh, bridge. Okay. Right there, it's a four measure phrase. It's, uh, you know, uh, American music is all based on uh, groupings of two, four, eight, 16, sometimes 12, 32 measures at a time, right? This is a four measure phrase. We're gonna talk about why I like four measure phrases here in a minute, but what he's playing there, the first and third measures are exactly the same. And then the, the, the second and fourth measures or a little bit different. So he's playing one, two, three, four, 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 one. And when you play that, that's the beginning, that's the ending of the phrase. Now I really like uh, drum parts and writing drum parts in the bands that I play in because I'm pretty much just playing original bands. I like having a two or four measure phrase because it gives you, I mean, it's a simple reason. It gives you more space to be creative in. Uh, the drums are the most easiest instrument to play mediocre. You can really get by with low effort and still make the song work. He could have easily just been And there is a ghost note on the lay of two and the lay of four on some of those measures. 
Also, comment section. This is just the way that I am hearing this song. If I get any of this shit wrong, tough. This is what I'm hearing. And I didn't really go through uh, the sheet music of this song to do this. This is just my ear. Uh, where was I at? Yeah, uh, he could have easily played that song, just that groove. That would have been fine. But he went the extra, the extra step. This drum part is, a, is an excellent piece of studio drumming. Everything is in its right place. It is a, I think that this is a masterpiece of studio drumming. So, you know, we're in the verse, right? Okay, so I'm going to try to get around copyright by jumping around. We're going to go to the uh, chorus because that's a double verse. I think it's a double verse at the beginning. I think you'd call that a double verse. Oh, yeah, I should have mentioned uh, we're in 12-8. Or four four triplets, right? We're we're shuffling. This is everything in this song is based on the triplets, <laughs> right? So all of his drum fills are one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly crash. Or you can say one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Ugh, that's tongue tongue twisting. I teach and I use one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly. So here is the chorus. <laughs> That little interlude that happens in the middle of that verse, so, or shit, chorus. So he's playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, right? One, two, three, lay four, one, two, three, lay four. And then he has a little like interlude in the middle of the chorus and at the end of the chorus, and it's very Dave Grohl. If you know how Dave Grohl structured uh, his choruses in, especially Nevermind. There's usually like the chorus part, and then there's like a little extra new thing that happens halfway through and at the end. And the interlude of this uh, chorus is... Right? Well, and that's what he does at the end. So there's the chorus. I'm playing a crash on every downbeat. This is a, There's some Dave Grohl influence in this track. So there's your verse and chorus. my first video back to the intro right so we've got an intro we've got a verse we've got a chorus and then we do the intro we do verse and the chorus now let's go ahead and skip to what happens after the second chorus okay so this is after the second chorus On Okay, so we don't go right into the guitar solo. It's like a like a musical interlude. It's another thing. The song is has a pretty sophisticated song form. When you think that, like when you hear Green Day, you automatically think oh, Bay Area punk rock. I think they're Bay Area, but California punk, right? Man, this thing is composed to the maximum. Before we get into the guitar solo, we have this little musical binnerlude thing, and it's a whole different drum part. Every section of the song has a unique drum part. I uh, preach that to my students, and I practice it myself when I'm playing in my band. So the groove that he's playing there, it's a now we're to a, to a two measure phrase. It's one, two, lay three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, lay three, four, one, two, three, four, or the don't plays that little triplet thing, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, what is it? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Right? One, two, Right. So that's just another you know, signature part. If you hear that without the music going on, you know that you're in that. I would call it just a little, uh, pre, it's a pre-solo, I guess. Okay. 
And then the guitar solo is basically over the chorus, playing the chorus part. Uh, if you're in an original band and the, the writer uh, says, we want to put a guitar solo here, your first question should be, what part of the song does it go over? Because all solos are played uh, usually over the chorus or the verse. Unless you're Van Halen, Van Halen writes completely unique parts just for the solo to go over. It's kind of a, just a, that's a Van Halen thing, right? But everybody else pretty much puts it in, sometimes the guitar solo will be in the bridge, but it's usually first and chorus. So right here, the guitar solo is in the chorus. So now let's skip ahead to our bridge. Starting out with the bass drum, right? Four on the floor, that's what we talked about before. You wanna get, it's the easiest way to get the crowd's attention is to play four on the floor. That part, it's too good to just be, uh, you know, a four measure intro. He, you, he, when he wrote that, I, I know that when Trey Cool came up with that, what is Trey Cool's real name? I've never, I've been listening to Green Day since Dookie. I bought that cassette tape new. That's how long I've been listening to Green Day. Actually, I've been listening to him since 1039 Smooth Out Slappy Hours. And I'm not sure if Trey Cool's on all of that, if at all. But yeah, I mean, I bought Dookie on cassette tape new at Disc Jockey at the mall. Anyone out there old enough to remember Disc Jockey at the mall? Uh, but when Trey Cool came up with this track or this drum part, it's too good to just be that intro. It has to happen again. And so now that that. Is now the, your, your repeating part and that signature thing. That's, that's, a, that's gold. That's gold. And I'm sure this song probably went platinum. So then you'll notice that he interludes here in a minute. He'll go to the hi-hat and play just one, two, three, four, and do on a crash and go one, two, three, four, and that'll set up this little shuffly thing that goes on on the floor tom. Right there. Interludes. Right, so... Actually, he's probably on his big one. Right. I don't know if he uses two floor toms. Uh, and that that is going to transition us back into the chorus. It's going to be a double chorus. Uh, and then after the double chorus, that little interlude thing that we were talking about. Because it's the third time that that chorus comes around, and it's a double chorus. So in fact, it's actually, a, it's actually the fourth chorus. He holds on to that interlude a, a little you know a crash set thing uh four times there and then we get us to the outro so even the outro has a personalized part now when he's playing uh, the verses, there is a ghost note, right? And now he's just bringing up that ghost note that was on the two lay of two and lay of four and making it full. And then, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, so. Right, and, then, and recycles that part. From the verse, right? And that gives us to the, the, the ending. So, you know. We'll do that again. So, there you go. That's what makes that drum track great. Great composition and, and, and having and putting care into each part you know the the the, the jazz part right this thing. well that's mimicking the guitar part so it's just a listen that that part that part writes itself you know but get doing the that that little thing is just look at that all that is is 
three lolly, four lolly, one, right? Something so simple makes that whole drum track pop. This is a masterpiece of a drum part. I hope that by just showing you the short demonstrations of all these, that you'll be able to play this song too. It's an excellent song to learn if you're, especially if you're a beginner to intermediate drummer. Uh, and I think maybe advanced drummers could get out of it the the composition of it all i know you think green day fucking trey cool you don't think of like drum composition but this thing is is maximized part writing it's it's maximizing what you can get out of a song and nothing's crazy you know nothing on there is going to get you on the cover of modern drummer magazine although i'm sure trey cool and i know he has been on cover of modern drummer magazine a couple times but nothing about what we play today is necessarily difficult but that goes to prove you don't have to play Dave Weckl parts to have good drum parts. A lot of times, it's better not to. Uh, there it is. Uh, hey, Rick Beato. Thanks, man. Uh, you'll be seeing more of these. I'm going to try to maybe do these about once a month. I hope that the, the audio works out when I go to edit this. And uh, again, if you all like what I'm doing, uh, uh, give me a like, a comment, and a share. You know, Check out my Patreon. Check out my merch table. And for everyone who has stuck with me through the last three years, again, this is the final video of my celebratory week of my three years of on YouTube. Thank you again. Thanks to everyone who's watched all seven of my videos. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch all seven of my videos this week. I did a really good job, I think. I'm pretty sure. I, I feel good about it. So thank you all very much. Thanks for watching and keep practicing until it's easy.